I'm very pleased to introduce our next guest. He was the first to announce his candidacy for the Republican nomination for President of the United States on March 23, 2011. Through his career, he has worked on nine presidential candidate campaigns and served as a senior consultant on campaigns for President Reagan, George H., George W. Bush, and for Gerald Ford. Would you please welcome presidential candidate Fred Carter. Thank you very much for that nice introduction. This is great to be here. This is a very exciting first for me. Uh, speaking in Hillsborough County, I launched my effort just about 15 months ago in Peterborough, down the street, where my 97-year-old aunt, Mimi Carter, resides, and uh, she put a little family brunch together, welcoming back to New Hampshire. And I, I went off in my rental car and started uh, meeting a lot of people throughout, throughout the Grand Estate. I've been here 14 more times for a total of 15 trips from California, and it's uh, been a wonderful experience. Um, I go by the, the moniker Fred Who, as I'm sure a lot of you are asking yourself. Um, but thanks to my nice introduction, you've, uh, you've heard that I have often been behind the scenes in politics. I got started as a young man at about six, eight years old with my dad who was a Republican County Precinct Chair in suburban Chicago and he would take my brother and me to commuter train stations to hand out brochures for Dwight Eisenhower. And I guess I got the political bug like many of you have, I can tell in this room, very, very early. I went out to California after I finished college and started working after a few years for Bill Roberts. Bill ran Ronald Reagan's two campaigns for governor with his partner Stu Spencer, and they were the preeminent political consultants and strategists for the 60s and 70s, and of course, got Reagan, whom they termed citizen politician, elected to governor, and uh, both men were very instrumental on his two presidential campaigns in 80 and in 84. I've also worked for not just winners like uh, Ford and, um, and Bush and, and Reagan, but also Paul Laxalt and Robert Dole and, and nine presidential campaigns all together. I've always been behind the scenes, I've always been accompanying the candidates, and I've, I've always wanted to run for office, but uh, never did. So I retired after a nice long 30-year career as a political consultant seven years ago. Got a little restless and decided to get back into the game. And here I am as a declared, the first declared candidate for President of the United States. I am an outsider, although I've been involved in politics, and it's, uh, as you've heard, for 50 years, but I've never run. I'm a businessman. I ran a small political consulting firm for 27 years. We never ran a debt. We always met our payroll. We, we would cut back when times were lean, and we would uh, hire people when, they, when times were good. We would cut our salaries when, when, when times were, when, when we were struggling, but we, we never went into debt. I want to take that business experience to the capital of the United States and, and try and keep this country solvent and get rid of our deficit and, and make a, a strong impact. I live in Laguna Beach, California, which uh, was became famous about 10 years ago with an MTV show by the same name, but it's a small community in the middle of Orange County. And I've been there for 15 years, uh, and I'm uh, very proud to call that home. It's, um, uh, it's a place I miss, but I, I, I love coming to New Hampshire. I've uh, experienced, I've actually had my picture taken at the Peterborough Diner in all four seasons that I sent back to, uh, <laughs> to all my friends. And uh, you've seen a lot of different climates uh, in the last 15 months. As you heard, I was the very first to file my, my paperwork, and I did things as I, I did that as I've been doing everything a little differently. I went into the Federal Election Commission office in Washington, D.C., 
with some uh, media, uh, some of my interns and friends, and I declared my candidacy for presidency, president, signing my life away on March 23rd. It was a very exciting experience. I went over to CBS and I was interviewed there afterwards as the first declared candidate, and there's been no turning back. I was here, um, I've been all over New Hampshire, but I was here at one of my proud accomplishments was just two months ago, St. Anselm College, which is where I've been spending a lot of time at a lot of colleges and universities trying to bring younger people into the party. And I won the, the St. A's College Republican and New Hampshire Institute of Politics straw poll. I beat Mitt Romney by five votes. I beat all the other candidates. There are 19 of us on the ballot, and I was very proud of that accomplishment. We spent all week working there, where they're in the lunch hour, where they're in the evenings, and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to open up this Republican Party to bring back a lot of the disenfranchised Republicans and to bring younger people in. Because don't forget, 42% of all voters in New Hampshire are registered independent, and, it, and as we are aware, many have left the Republican Party. I ran the first commercial, some of you may have seen. If not, you go to my website, fredcarger.com. It's called Good Morning, New Hampshire. It's kind of a fun, uh, entertaining spot that introduces me to the voters. We put that on last September. I previewed that at the Candidates Forum. Some of you might have been at at St. A's, at the Institute of Politics. I was the first to hire staff in New Hampshire. I've got my coordinator, who is also our cinematographer, Kevin, Kevin uh, Miniter from Maine, who's coming over to help uh, coordinate this. We have three college coordinators around the state, and I'm very serious about this effort. I'm a state, I was the first hire state director in Iowa, the former communications director of the state Republican Party, and I've been, been to that state seven times as well. And now tomorrow, I'm the first to take an issue spot on, which is gonna be taken on big oil. I think they are, are, have a huge hand in our, in our problems, in our economic problems, with our, uh, the higher oil prices, which are strangling American families and hurting our American economy. So tomorrow, while I'm not invited to tomorrow night's debate by CNN, I will be there because I'm running my commercial during the debate in, uh, in New Hampshire and in Iowa, both on WMUR and CNN. So it'll either be in the debate or right around the debate. And so um, I will be present. One of the other firsts that I bring to this campaign is that I am the first openly gay candidate to ever seek the presidency of the United States. And it's, it's uh, surprising to a lot of people that the first openly gay Republican would be the, the one to do it. We think it might be a Democrat, but you know, the party that I grew up in, the party of White Eisenhower, the party of Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt and, and many others were, were much more you know, open, receptive, to a variety of people, Lincoln, you know, huge responsibility for freeing the slaves, Theodore Roosevelt for expanding our civil rights. I want to do that. I think the Republican Party should take that lead. I'm concentrating on education reform. I'm very concerned about the direction of our country. If we're going to have a future, obviously there's some very there's some major problems we need to deal with at this point, but education and transforming education is the number one issue that I've been dealing with. I've been meeting with experts from Secretary of Education all the way to the teachers and students to come up with ideas. And I've already introduced some. I'm really willing to take on the teachers' unions because I think tenure is strangling our schools and becoming a huge problem. We need quality teachers for our kids. The future depends on it. I'm looking at, at new jobs programs. I'm tackling things like outsourcing. I've been meeting with a lot of experts on that because we're losing hundreds of thousands of jobs to other countries. We need to be able to compete. So when these kids that I'm meeting with at colleges and universities that I'm hearing about their concerns, that they will have a job and that we will be able to compete with the rest of the world. My theme is very Reagan-esque. I work for him. Both his re-election re and his first campaign, a uh, successful campaign in 1980. I, our firm ran his political action committee, Citizens for the Republic. I was a senior staff member of his um, uh, inaugural committee and uh, very close to that whole Reagan operation. I want to bring back the American spirit that Ronald Reagan brought to this country in very dire times in 1981, and I'm looking forward to that. And that American spirit is my theme, it's optimism, it's the ability to get along. 
And I'm a little different kind of Republican, as you can gather. My, my first meeting with a state party chair was actually with a Democratic state party chair, Ray Buckley. And I have, I have had that ability to get along with people. I want to be able to go to Washington to meet with the leaders of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party and let everyone work together. I'm going to bring that American spirit to New Hampshire. We're giving out Frisbees to every voter household. I've been precinct walking all over the state. I do it with a bagpiper because I'm a cheap state and I want to show my frugality, but I want to have some fun. We're giving it out in colleges. We're giving everyone here today. It's, uh, it, we're kind of come, coming up with 101 uses for our Fred Frisbees. Not just for Frisbee, but for plates and their good ice scrape for the winter and a variety of things. So we're going to have some fun with this. We're going to try and bring new people into the Republican Party and liven things up. So hopefully by this time in February 14th, when I will be in your primary, which is a huge honor and excitement for me, there'll be no more Fred Hoos. Anyway, thank you very, very much for listening to me, for coming today. This is a, a great job for me. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Representative Belanger, if you call him up, do you have a question from him? So I hear you got your picture taken all four seasons in New Hampshire, and that was all in June, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering if you have any opinion or given any thoughts about rates during the draft. Um, as far as the draft goes, the question was reinstituting the draft. Um, I'm not too keen on that. I think I, I've always advocated uh, some kind of community service, government service, and I think that we should have that not as a requirement. It should be voluntary, but I think we need to do many more things to encourage, you know, Teach in America programs and the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps and bring our younger people, as they do in many other countries in the world, into some kind of service to help this country and, and less, um, I think the military, the volunteer the military is working well. And anybody else with a question? Representative Flanagan. We've got a few representatives here. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming to New Hampshire. Um, in the House of Representatives, and I believe in the Senate, we recently passed a photo ID bill, which required people to present a photo ID prior to their voting. And you bring up college students that have been very active. Well, a lot of these college students don't live in New Hampshire. I'm just wondering if you have a feeling about the college student and maybe the impact of photo ID, whether you endorse photo ID, that type of thing. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, someone I grew up with who you served with, I'm sure you know, uh, Representative Greg Storr, was the author of the bill. And uh, I met him that, that day. I spoke up at Dartmouth College where I spoke against that bill. I think in my efforts to, to open up the Republican Party so we're not a minority party, as it's been my entire lifetime, and practically everyone's in this room, we need to encourage college students. So no, I oppose that bill. And, and I understand, and I've you know, been in Republican politics so long, college towns tend to be a lot more liberal. And I just think we need to reach out, and I think we need to open up our messaging and bring college students in. But I, I don't support the photo ID, and, and I do think that we, we should encourage our college students to be voting, and particularly in New Hampshire. You know, this is the most exciting state. I've done one thing, I've taken it a little further. I've recommended, and I did in the speech at the Rockefeller Center, and that was the first presidential campaign I worked on in 1964, that was a great honor as well, that we consider, we discuss lowering the voting age, either 16 or 17. And I know that's been hugely controversial, but I have great faith in our younger people. They're much more informed now with the internet and with their education. Encourage teachers, school boards to teach politics real side, real time, so these kids can learn about it. And, and I got the idea here in New Hampshire when I talked to students who said they were most informed when the elections were going on, when they learned about them in high school. Let's teach politics in high school. Let's get politicians like me and a lot of you here in the high schools teaching politics, learning campaigns, and I think that'll help with our dropout rate. We're losing a million students a year, and I'm advocating that as the 28th Amendment. Thank you, Fred, and I appreciate your comment. And again, Fred Cougar, uh, Carter, I'm sorry, Carter, <laughs> presidential candidate for the U.S. 